our uh, staff here to felicitate and welcome uh, Mukta ma'am. <laughs> Anushka is now felicitating Mukta ma'am. As judges, we must have an awareness. And I must confess that the awareness to us was brought by Dr. Rajesh. I still remember it was the year 2010-11 when he was first introduced to the Juvenile Justice Committee by Mrs. Meena Kabir. And all she said, get some place for him. And we did know and just know that yes, drug abuse is a big problem, but what was the magnitude, what the problem exactly is, how to tackle, we were as ignorant as any other person. So considering that there will be some person who can take care of the situation, we thought we will find out a place. And you know the first place which was the Seva Kuti, it was, we had no, no other place available. So I went to Seva Kuti, it was an auditorium made, which was not in use, not in functional for the last two years. I stood up, I said, this is the place, we are going to change it as a dormitory, make the bathrooms here, this will be a small, small stage for the children to do, here are the dormitories, make it fully ventilated, make a kitchen on this side, and this is how it started. He pointed out how difficult it was, and then, when we got into it, we got to know there was so many issues where we were lacking and we needed to work. If we broadly classify, there are four facets to it which we need to take care of. One is awareness, second is identification, third is treatment, and the fourth most important is rehabilitation. <coughs> now awareness, when we talk about awareness, you know what happens in most of the families, the families are not even aware that their children are into it. It is so much into secrecy or ignorance. Both the parents may be working, whether it is the urban class or the rural class or the lower class or the middle income group strata. They have hardly any time for the child. So they don't know what the child is doing, doing the throughout the day. In the evening when they came, come back, they have so many other course to perform that it's just like an idle formality, but do your homework, see your class teacher's homework is complete, your next day's uniform is there, that's the end of the matter which parents feel their job is done. But what the child is mentally, psychologically going through and to overcome that what the child has got into is something which the parents don't get to know till it is too late in the day. Now, initially it starts as this, Dr. Dhawan, I must congratulate your, your uh, presentation was remarkable and this is the kind of study we were looking for. We've in fact had number of programs for such studies and all that. But we never got any concrete data, at least today we have some concrete data with us. It undoubtedly starts where the elders in the family are taking tobacco, cigarette, liquor. So there is an easy availability in the household. If not, the easy availability comes from the, liquor, uh, from the peer group. Or somebody, some people who layer into it, they say, oh come on. They'll just flare up the child and say, come on, this is something you must experience. A child who's already into troubles in the sense he doesn't get a proper attention at the house. He does not get that proper mental and physical solace at home. What he does is he says, oh, this is a good way of getting out of my negativities, my frustrations and that that presentation which Mr. Grary gave, that sense of belonging, it's very important. You know, if you don't belong to your family or you don't belong to school, how isolated and alone a person feels. Look at you yourself. If you're working in an institution and you don't have a feeling of belonging, I mean, your 50% work you are not able to do. You can't give your best. You just come like a 
machine do your work and go whereas if there is a sense of belonging the work done is very different so that sense of belonging to the home and the school not being there none of them get aware what has happened now just to identify to con- collect the data we start a program that let's have identification in the schools probably school dropouts we'll get to know and it took us 3 to 4 years first to train the counselors then put them into the school and can you get believe it after 3 4 years initially in the first two years we got the data how many children are identified 10 to 20 into liquor 40 to 50 in uh, smoking and none into drug abuse is and what is this and then again the rigorous coaching and instructions to all those counselors went and finally yes they said 1% children into drug abuse and all that that identification was a big big issue and which still continues to be big issue if the teacher in the school has that feeling of belongingness or just talk to the child personally and it doesn't take much you have 40 children in the class just one word oh you had your breakfast properly what did you have what are you going to have in the lunch okay what were you doing in the evening somewhere that feeling that the child can go and speak to someone will make all the more difference at least if not at home the child knows there is somebody who's taking care of me that when i go the child I, my my problems will be heard that is the main thing which we are lacking and this is one reason why we can't identify so two levels we need to work out is in the community so that there is lot of awareness where drug dependence can lead to us and secondly the identification the early identification of children and you know one thing was dr rajesh told us about all these problems but what jolted myself particularly was while doing a death reference i found that the child which was taken away the parents had no idea that for the last 60 days the child was not attending to school so when we went into the matter deep we found obviously the person who had killed it had actually entice the child and when the child would go to the school he would take away the child so instead of the child the child would go to the that person and slowly slowly he put the child into that drug dependence to that extent that he ultimately died so see the consequences now if the parents were vigilant or if the teacher was vigilant the life could have been saved so these are small little things which we need to work out then as far as treatment is concerned we are seriously lacking in the treatment i was just speaking to dr dhawan aims initially had its center at harinagar today at least we have no center in delhi because it shifted to ghaziabad and my new we would say that ghaziabad doesn't need but what we need is at least one such center in every district in the country that is the bare minimum requirement which we have because see each district has number of populations unless and until you are able to treat the child you are at an early stage it is it's very difficult to bring back the child into the society the treatment if it is far flung is always ineffective because firstly the parents will not send over there because they know there because how will they go there how will they monitor what will happen to the child he may not fall into worse situation but if it is within the district their communication their going their meeting may be far easier and their monitoring of its his 
uh, improvements would also be far better. So at least when you people represent such parts of the society, such like if the Ministry of Home Affairs is doing, if it, health can be associated, we must have at least one treatment center in each district. And then comes the last aspect of rehabilitation. You know, the treatment, awareness, identification, treatment is all meaningless if we are not able to rehabilitate. What happens is you treat and if you send him back to this, him or her to the back to the same peer group, within a month or two you will find the child back into drug abuse. So one thing which we need to do for rehabilitation is put the children into proper stream of education, put the children into ex more of extracurricular activities including sports. Sports is a very very good activity. Firstly, it burns out their extra energy and it burns out in a very, very effective manner. And second thing, which I find in today's generation is, they are not learning to lose. <laughs> and it's so very common in every strata of the society. Parents have one or two child, they want him to be the best, the winner. But everybody can't be the number one. So when they, when they lose or when they don't get proper attention, this is what leads them to drug abuse, finding solace somewhere else. So sports is one activity which teaches them that one day if you will win, the other day you will lose and lose with a spirit, with a good spirit. There is nothing wrong in losing. If you lose, you learn to work hard and come up. The second, the, the, the other aspect of rehabilitation is as far as younger children, education, sports, extracurricular activity. So make them so busy that they don't have any time available for all the, to think about all this. And for the ones who are across the age of 16, I would, and I have as a matter of practice, always suggested and also practice that make them into meaningful vocation. I still remember with Dr. Rajesh again identifying us with uh, National Skill Development Corporation. In our homes we got them and they gave to all these adolescent boys and girls, they gave uh, training into hospitality sector and all that. Now the best part was that those two, three months of extensive training helped those children to get vocation. So during when they were in the homes, especially special homes and place of safety, they were given that training and mind you, special home and place of safety were children who were into the serious crimes, not the petty offences. So. They were given this training, three months training, at the home itself. Thereafter, their <coughs> Aadhaar cards were prepared, their bank accounts were prepared, and none of them had the address of the home. So there was no identification that the child comes from such and such home. And then with all other children, like there were placement melas organized, so these children were taken out to those placement melas instead of calling the hiring agencies to this place so that they just don't get to know from where you are hiring. And the results were so encouraging. 70 to 80 percent children in the first shot got their employments. And the moment they were released in another 15 days, one month and all, they walked back into proper employments. So with the result when they were busy, they were earning, they had no time to go back to that peer group and fall into that substance abuse. So my take from whatever little experience I have had over the years and learning from all of you including Dr. Rajesh and from these little experience has been that the approach has to be multi-pronged. 
awareness, identification, treatment and rehabilitation. If we miss out on any of the step, we cannot fight this drug abuse. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here.